Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Agar, and this video looks at comparing doubles and strings in Java. So far, we've looked at using the comparison operator in Java, also known as equals equals, and is represented by a double equal sign. Note that this can only be used to compare certain types. So we've seen that equals equals is appropriate for determining if two ints or any of the other primitive integer types like longs or bytes um, are the same. Also for booleans or chars to see if they have the same value. And we've looked at a couple different examples of things like that. We've said that you cannot use equals equals when comparing floating points, so floats or doubles, um, or any object which includes a string. So why can't we use equals equals to compare floating point values? Well, remember that floating point values are really just approximations. Um, whenever you're dealing with a decimal point, somewhere in that decimal point, it could be rounded, and it could be different with two different systems. So it's really better to specify a threshold that you don't want two values to be different by. So maybe doing something like this if statement here. Um, you're checking to see if the difference between two values, a and b, um, are less than some value, epsilon here. So you could have something like if the difference between A and B was less than 0.01 or something like that. So um, notice here that I'm using absolute value because A minus B could have come back to be negative. So I'm just using the absolute value function here to handle the negative values. We've also said that equals equals should not be used to compare objects. So suppose we have two different objects, S1 and S2. And let's say that these are string objects because that's what we're pretty familiar with right now. What's actually stored in S1 and S2 is their memory address, not the actual text of the string. And what our comparison operator equals equals checks is if what's actually stored in that variable S1 and S2 match, meaning that if I said something like S1 equals equals S2, it's going to return true if and only if S1 and S2 hold those same memory addresses in these variables. So even if S1 and S2 are string variables that have identical strings inside, if those strings are stored in different memory locations, then that's going to return false. Let's look at an example to kind of put this into context. Okay, so here I've created two different strings, S1 and S2, that contain the exact same text, just the string Java. Now we've said that this comparison operator equals equals is really going to be checking if S1 contains the same memory address as S2. So it's not actually going to be looking through the letters to see if they're the same. Now the interesting thing here is that Java's actually gotten pretty smart. In order to best utilize space, it can actually figure out sometimes um, if these strings are actually the same thing and end up storing them at the same memory address. So if I were to actually run this, again, Java's pretty smart and figured this out, it's going to tell me true that these things are equal. So what that actually tells us is that S1 and S2 are both pointing to the same memory location where the word Java is stored. This occurrence where Java figures out that multiple variables are pointing to the same string and therefore just points both variables to the same memory address is known as interning. There's nothing special about the word Java. This would work the same if we had the same text hello here. So run it again and it says true. Now you may be asking yourself at this point, well, why can't I use equals equals to compare strings? It seems like it works. Well, if I were to concatenate these strings, like let's say I have another string S3 equal to world. Let's say I concatenate these strings. So S1 plus equals S3. Now what we're doing is we're concatenating world onto the end of this, so it should really say, hello world. And then do the same thing for S2. S2 plus equals S3. We can then even print out S1 and S2 just to make sure that they do in fact contain the same text. But now it will be interesting to see if S1 and S2 have the same memory locations. So if I were to run this, you can see that S1 printed out hello world, S2 also printed out hello world. We can see that the text is virtually identical, but we get a value of false here, meaning that once we started doing things like concatenating, then the computer could no longer figure out if S1 and S2 in fact held the same thing, so they were assigned different memory addresses. 
So the equals equal sign is not reliable here um, to truly test whether two strings or any other types of objects are in fact equal. So since the comparison operator is not a good option for comparing strings, we do need a way to be able to compare two different strings and see if they're equal. So luckily the string class provides us with a method called equals. So instead of saying s1 equals equals s2 here, I can say s1 dot equals s2. Now the ordering of these two does not matter whatsoever, and this equals method actually returns true or false whether or not the values are equal. So if I run this now, then I get the value of true, which is what I was looking for here. Now let's test something out with this. Let's see if I were to change S2's hello to have a capital H. They're pretty much the same, right? Other than one has a capital letter, one does not. So I wonder if the equals method is going to tell us true or false. And if we run it, you can see that, oh, they're not the same with this equals method, which makes sense because they're not actually the same. There is a difference, right? but sometimes you may want to determine if two strings are the same, ignoring the case of the letters. Luckily, there's another method defined for us called equals ignore case. Pretty self-explanatory that it's going to check whether S1 equals S2, ignoring the case of any letters in the string. So if I save and run this, now we can see that these two are equal to each other, even though there's a capital and a lowercase h. Again, I can make any of these letters have different cases. So I capitalize the L here and the O here. And if I run it, it's still going to tell me that it's the same. So we saw that we could use the equals and equals ignore case method to compare two strings and see if they're equal. Well, this also works for other objects. So the equals method can and should be defined for each class. Later on in the semester, when you guys will be creating your own objects, you will define your own equals method. So the programmer will specify how we determine if two objects or if two different items of a class are equal. More on that later on. So for strings, equals checks to see whether the characters are the same in each string, unless you use equals ignore case, and then that just ignores the case of the characters. Sometimes you may want to compare two strings, but no more than just if they're equal to each other. So there's another method with the string class called compare to, and it compares two different strings, um, telling you which one comes first in lexicographic order, which is like alphabetical order, but a few more rules because of capital letters and numbers and symbols and things like that. So this method compare to, unlike the equals method, doesn't return a true or false. It's going to return a number, some kind of numeric value that helps you identify which of these two strings, the one calling the method on the left, or the one being passed in as the argument inside the parentheses, comes first in lexicographic order. So what exactly do I mean by lexicographic order? I'm talking about the alphabetical order that Java recognizes. And this is actually the alphabetical order that is in the ASCII chart. Um, so a couple little rules that you need to know is normal alphabetical ordering applies. So the word ant here would precede the word bug. A precedes B. Simple things like that. Um, but also capital letters are going to precede lowercase letters. So here cat with a capital C precedes cat with a lowercase c. And then finally substrings are going to precede a larger string. So here he is part of the string of hello and so he will precede hello. Okay, so here I've got two different strings, S1 and S2 declared, and I'm going to be giving these strings different values, and we're going to use the compare to method to see which one of these comes first. So let's set S1 equal to he, and S2 equal to she. Now we know in alphabetical order, right, which is the same here, that he is going to precede she. Let's make a print statement, system.out.println, and I'm going to use this compare to method, s one to s 2 I could have done either order here, but remember that the order you put these in will affect the outcome. So we said that he, because of an H here, should precede the word she, because H comes before S, right? But what is this going to print out? It's not going to print out a true or false or the words he precedes she. We said it's going to print out a number value, right? So a numeric value. 
Now the easiest way to remember the number value for me is that if this first number, S1, uh, wins or precedes the other, then it's going to print out a negative value. If they're exactly the same, so there's no difference, a zero, and if S2, or whichever uh, string is in the parentheses here, precedes the other, it's going to print out a positive value. So this is really just like a negative to positive scale here, and this kind of helps me remember how that's going to function. So since S1 is the word he, then we know this should precede S2, so we should get a negative value here when we run it. So let's run this program, and we do, we get a negative value. Now let's change these words around a little bit. Let's do he and hello. This is a little different because he is a substring of hello, and our rule tells us that if one word is, the, is a substring of the other, then this substring would precede the other. So if I were to run it again, again, S1 should proceed, right, giving us a negative number. Now, notice that these negative numbers can be different values, and what's actually happening here is, remember, each letter uh, has a numerical value associated with it, so the compare to method is doing some math and basically taking the difference of S1 and S2, and that's how this is working to get a negative zero or positive number. If there's no difference, then we get zero. So again, if I do hello, virtually no difference, so I should get a zero for the value. Good. And then if I were to make S2 hello with a capital H, remember that capitals precede lowercase letters in this lexicographic order. So if S2 precedes S1 because of the capital letter, then we should get a positive number here. And let's run it. Positive number. Now that we kind of understand how compare to works, um, we can use these in if statements. So let's say that I wanted you to print out whichever string came first. So I can have an if statement here, right? Like if s one to s 2 we can't leave it like that, right? Because again, this is going to return a number. And so then I'm saying if a number, that doesn't make any sense. I need a Boolean expression here. But I know that I'm expecting negative, zero, or positive. So I can say something like, if whatever number it gives me is less than zero, then I know that this first string, right, S1, is the first word in alphabetical order. So I can say system.out.println S1. So you can do things like this within if statements.